Hey, boys and girls. So, boys and girls club, uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. So, I'm going to be showing you this really cool software I found called MuseScore. I have it pulled up on the screen now, so hopefully you'll be able to see that. Um, it's a free notation software. Which all that really means is it's just an easy way to um, write music, write tabs even, if you want to write something for guitar to play. Um, but beyond that, you can also just hear how things sound. So hopefully, you'll be able to hear as I'm putting notes down that every time I click, the note sounds. And beyond that functionality, you can also, like if I choose that note right there and I hit this play button, you can play everything back. Now, the really cool thing about that is, let's say you have this really cool idea on guitar. You know, you have a melody that you just played one day and you really want to use that in something, but you don't have a piano or you don't have a recording software, recording equipments that you can, um, you know, record that melody and then do something else underneath it to make it sound good, to harmonize it, if you will. What you can do is you can just go in here and put together a little uh, keyboard part. And you can play along to that. I'm placing notes at random. I have no idea how this is going to sound. But we're going to find out. So yeah, that's now something that's an option. You can just write a little piano part. I'm going to start over here because I don't know what I was what I was doing right there. But if I want to do something in the key of D, D major, what I can do is write these chords, which, like I've uh, like I've brought up before, a chord is just a triad, or that's all you need to make a chord, three notes. So for this, I just made a D chord, D major, because this is in the key of D, and that's two sharps. So D, and then the third in a D major scale is an F sharp, the fifth is an A. It's usually gonna look like this on sheet music, of just a line between them, or uh, I'm gonna do the fifth now, which is A. So for that chord, it's gonna be also a line between them. But if I did the fourth, G, they're all going to be on lines with spaces between them. Of course, that's not the only way you can write it. Like if I did this, and just for the fun of it, I'm going to throw a seventh in there, which is the note right below D. So that's a C. So now if I go back to here and I play this through, That's still a D chord, it's a D7 chord, but it's just organized a little bit differently. The notes aren't exactly the way they uh, fall with this uh, voicing, if you will. So now we'll go back down here and we can add some bass notes to this. So you can see there are two clefs here on this piano part. There's treble clef, which if you're reading sheet music and you know all your notes, the lines are going to be F, A, C, E, or the spaces are F, A, C, E, and the lines are E, G, B, D, and then F. So that's in treble clef. An easy way to remember that is this little spiral right here is going to wrap around the line that indicates G. So if you can remember that, then you can kind of work your way around from that. Like I know that the next note above G is an A. So that's right here above that's B, C, D, E, F. Then we end up back at G up here. Bass clef is a little bit different. So same thing, you can use this little spiral trick. It has these two dots too. Now, 
these line up on the line that means F. So how up here on treble, uh, there we are. This is an F on this top line, the very top. Down here, it's one line below. So this is now an A, because F, <laughs> F, A, G. So if I wanted to do a D on this, and I knew in treble clef, you know, here's G, B, D. So it would be this line. But with bass clef, you read a one line lower. So you put it right there. At least that's how I always think about it, because I played saxophone for a couple years, and I always read treble clef. So bass is still a little hard for me. So I always go D, and then I just go a line down. And then A, same thing. This would be an A in treble. So this right here is an A in bass. And then G, D. So now let's give that a try with our bass notes in place. Sounds a little bit nicer. You can do a whole lot of really cool things with this. And like I said, you can just play around with it and figure out what kinds of sounds you can make uh, and then just play them back. Um, Muse score isn't the most uh, powerful, I'll say. And you can add dynamics markers too, which is what I'm doing right here. So if I want these notes to be really loud, I can put three Fs, so then it's gonna play back really loud. Same thing here, the Ps are soft for piano, Fs are forte, for very loud. The more of them, the quieter or louder you're supposed to be. And MP, meso piano, MF, meso forte. So kind of in between the two, not really super loud, not super soft either. So I could add that just to give it a little bit of a different sound. Maybe have it sound a little bit more like I would want it to be played. So now. You can see these got way louder and I can barely even hear these two measures. Um, we can change time signatures. So if I go down here, I'm gonna make this 6-8 now, because I can. I'm also gonna make it um, D minor. I, I guess I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna make this D minor. There we go. Now I gotta go back and Make it in 6 8. So we're just going to write a little banjo track again, just to give you the feel for what you can do with this. So I'm just going to put down a whole bunch of notes and see what happens. So now if I click that little kind of note N with a little note head at the bottom button, I figured like, this is how you start putting notes. And then if you click it again, that's how you stop. There are a couple other options too, but that little button seems to work just fine. So that's apparently what that sounds like. Um, I could never play it that fast on my banjo, but that's the other benefit of stuff like this. Instead of trying to play a really, really fast thing on piano or on guitar to try and figure out what it would sound like, you know, those things are now an option with this. It's a, cube, it's a computer instead of a person. Uh, so you can do a lot of really, really fast and really difficult stuff if you like the way it sounds without having to worry about if it's actually playable or not. Like for example, we're gonna go even faster. And you'll notice uh, the mouse isn't moving at all because you can also enter it on the keyboard. So 
So let's see what monstrosity I just created. Uh, it's not even letting me go up any. There we are, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure where that uh, that other page went. There we are. So if we play this. I don't think anyone would ever be able to play that. At least I hope not. That's scary. But you can have it happen in here. So that's an option. Uh, like I said, MuseScore is completely free. Um, it does require a download. But after that, you own the software. You have the software on your computer. You can do stuff like this. You can do things that make a little bit more sense or sound a little nicer than what I've been doing with it. Um, and yeah, don't have to pay at all to you know, make your own music with this or write your own songs. You don't need to do sheet music to write your own songs, but I think it definitely helps. Because uh, you know, then you can give that to someone else who can read sheet music and then they can play it for you instead of having to do everything yourself if you just know it by memory so uh i guess that's all i have for you today uh you know if this is something that interests you i would definitely recommend downloading MuseScore score and playing around with it for a little bit seeing what kinds of sounds you can make and that's about it best of luck